All right, guys, give me one sec. I'll be right back. My girlfriend randomly decided to start talking to me the moment I pushed the live button. I'll be right back. What? Yeah, buddy. It's because it's pointed that way, so I can do something about it. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, guys. I got a long one for you here today. Um, we're probably going to be live for, I don't know, maybe two hours on this. Um, this is going to be a full, complete installation of third-party gimbal if things go smoothly here. Um, this weighed in at 173 grams. I'm trying to set the solo up for using uh, newer cameras, um, like GoPro Hero 5, 6, and 7, um, and still being able to have FPV and all that stuff. But I also wanted a lighter weight gimbal. This one comes in at 173. Um, that one's basically built out of a lot of aluminum, and this one here is very heavy. It has massive motors on it. And I have a feeling this is actually taking away quite a bit of flight time. So we're going to go ahead and pull all of this down today. Redo a bunch of the flight parameters that this thing is supposed to operate on. And um, we're going to go ahead and do a little soldering. We're taking the whole top of the Solo off. We're going to solder in pin 14 again. Um, I was going to use the breakout board, but I decided against the brownie board's breakout board. Because there's some other stuff I want to do. And I want to have the... Uh, relays open and available for that pin out sourcing so we're not going to be using the brownie boards breakout board on this we're going to be doing direct wire connect and uh so we got we got a little bit of work ahead of us what's up mars so this is uh this is why third party rules if you're a diy person um also if anybody has a 3d printer um i could really use some new 3d printed legs for the solo because that one buckled if you see it's all bent so I think it's time for a new 3D printed legs because this thing is very off balance at the moment. So if anybody wants to send me some legs, that would be awesome. My email is in the description of the video. I also received a letter with more stickers for my boat um, from Top Wolf Automotive to put on my boat, which is very cool. So don't forget, guys, if you have some, some channel stickers that you want to send to me, and uh, I put them all over my boat or on the back of my car. And um, we run them so people get to see them in all my videos. So if that was something you guys wanted to do, that is available to you. So we're going to get started here. I am uh, TCM. What's going on? First, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I'm doing good. Les, how's it going, buddy? Today we're doing some serious teardown here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the stock gimbal. So for those of you guys that know, there are three screws, one, two, and three on that side. And um, these are kind of a pain in the butt. Um, it's been a while since I've taken this gimbal off. I'm using the stock solo tool screwdriver because it does fit the best. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this sideways. We're just going to remove those three screws that are there and prepare this for the third party setup. You can back these out all the way. There's actually a nut on them that prevents them from coming out all the way. So go ahead and get in here. As you can see, I already built the gimbal setup, so that's ready to go on. The rest of this is just soldering and wiring, which is going to be kind of a big annoyance for everybody, but whatever. What's going to work best here? There we go. I can insert it through there. That should work. I'll take the stock gimbal off here, designed for the Hero 3 black and the Hero 4 silver and black. I should be able to grab a hold of this now and give a pull. And this should come out of there. There we go. Going to be disconnecting this. Should be a prong on the back side. There it is. And here's the HDMI cable. I'll be unplugging. If I can get that off here. There we go. All right. So I said that the other gimbal weighed 100. What did I say? It weighed 173 grams. Let's see what the difference is between my home-built gimbal 
and the solo gimbal. Okay, so let's get the scale out here. Let's see if we can make some more flight time for now. I'm just going to set this aside, pull out the scale, get this set up here. I'm going to turn this on. Just for reference, one more time, I am going to wrap this up and lay it on top. If I can get these to wrap. There we go. We'll go ahead and just lay this right on top there. It says 171 grams. So 171 grams. <clears throat> That's with the wires not quite on there. And now let's see what this animal weighs here. 236 grams so yeah man um there's definitely almost a whole nother gopro that's without adding the gopro to this the stock gimbal um your average gopro like the hero 4 i'll go ahead and show you what that weighs right now so there's a massive difference in weight here let's go ahead and just set a gopro on there yeah 80 grams okay so we said this was like almost 200 and 240 grams almost, and this was 173 grams home built. Um, yeah, so that's like adding two more GoPros to the drone. So the one GoPro and then adding a whole nother GoPro uh, extra weight on there. So that's actually quite a bit of weight that you've added. So by doing it this way, this should weigh what just the gimbal weighs on the stock gimbal setup by having the GoPro on this setup. So there's, there's a plethora of reasons why you would want to third start to third party things. You can definitely increase your flight time. So happy Lux. What's up? UK sewing machine. Sorry, guys. I have to turn around to stare at my monitor here. Um, one, two race and fished fourth in the final at micro meets. Very awesome, dude. That's awesome. Um, good day. Happy Lux. Yeah, man. Um, let me go back and check out some of these comments a little higher. Hope you guys are following mine's vlogs. Thank you. Nice to see you get drone mate Mac. A nice job on it. Yes, yes. All right, so guys, I'll be trying to kind of pay attention to the comments and back to here and back to the comments and back to here. So now you guys have an idea that this entire setup weighs as much as the stock gimbal without the GoPro, the OEM gimbal for the solo. And this was very easy to build. Uh, this is a super lightweight gimbal setup. Um, it is PMW driven and it also is tuned by base cam. So um, I'm hoping all this goes together smoothly. So we got a little work ahead of us here. I'm going to go ahead and put some of this stuff away and it is time to pull the solo apart. Um, you'll also need to order one of these wires. Uh, this is a connection for the HDMI port on the bottom. This is a third party connection for the HDMI port on the bottom of the solo. This will actually plug in just like this. There you go. And now you can extend the wire because this doesn't hang down far enough and it's not loose enough to connect to the gimbal. So this will allow you now to tuck all this back up in there once the gimbal is installed. And you'll have a nice loose wire to plug into your GoPro system. So uh, this was a wire. I will put the purchase uh, link for this in the description in case anybody wants this. And this plugs directly in. So all you're doing is just extending the wire. This plugs directly into the HDMI port on the side of the GoPro just like that. And then you have FPV. So good to go. I hope you guys are following along here. If I start getting a little complicated, feel free to ask some questions. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And we will continue from here. Mr. Crowley, what is going on? Ryan, how's it going, bud? <laughs> You're welcome, host. <laughs> so, all right, well, <clears throat> let's... Uh, we have to cut, we have to splice into the gimbal link because I'm going to be, uh, there should be a black wire somewhere. I'll find it. Yep. Okay. Red and black are right next to each other. That's the power sourcing that we'll be tapping into for a JST connection because that's what this runs on. This runs on a female JST connector. So we'll be installing a male JST connection right onto the OEM gimbal hookup. And the fun thing about this setup, guys, is if you want to go back to OEM, it's really, really simple. 
So I will reach up here and I'm going to grab a male JST connector. So these are just some extra JST connectors that I ordered. So I have these and then I can plug directly right into the gimbal. So we'll be attaching this. I'm probably going to cut this in half like that or so. Um, we'll be attaching this directly to the red and black wire on the uh, gimbal connection. This is a Molex 1.0 connector. So next up, let's go ahead and take my knife. We're going to pop off the GPS cover here because we need to access the inside of the Solo. So just be careful with this part. There are little clips. Just uh, pry gently, and this should just pull right away. Should just pop right off. There you go. The GPS is underneath here. So we're going to go ahead and unscrew some screws. I don't even remember how many of them there are here. There we go. There's one. I'll flip the GPS tray over and I'll go ahead and put these inside the GPS tray so that we don't lose them. Okay, let me uh, I'll pull up my phone. What's up, Steven? Uh, no, I will not be taking off the props. There's absolutely no reason to take off the props. Nothing I'm doing will require the prop removal. So there's no battery in it. There's no power inserted on it. They're not in the way of what I'm doing. I'm perfectly fine with keeping the props on there. If it makes it easier for you to work on, feel free, Andreas, to take them off. That's completely up to you and your needs. This will make it a little easier. I can pop up my channel on my phone and watch the <laughs> watch what I got going on here. There we go. All right, Roland, don't break it. I'm not going to break it. Get off me. Okay, come on, get up there. There we go. Oh, geez. All right. Well, guys, I mean, it, it's time. It's, it's time to start thinking about the future of the Solo. I waited two years so that everybody would stop bitching and complaining and, oh, it's so perfect. And now we're at that point where I'm a happy camper. And I'm a happy camper because... The solo parts have now become obsolete, which means you have to do the battery mod that everybody wanted to avoid. And you have to install a third-party gimbal because you don't have a choice if you want to run newer cameras and have more fun. So, for me, I'm having a blasty blast. Alright guys, so what you're going to do is pull up on the tray, like so. If I can get this to pop out here. Urgh. I don't think... Oh, I did forget two screws. Look at that. Look at this guy. I'm like, why isn't that popping out of there? That should just come right on out. I didn't forget that one. All right. That should pop up. I don't think I forgot any more screws. I got one still holding on a little bit here. Oh, what a pain in the dingus, huh? Come on out of there. Don't be don't be like that. And a couple of these screws are really putting up a fight, man. This is actually my first time having this solo completely apart, so. Come on, you. Let go. Let go of it. Man, this one's really being a pain in the butt. Come on, you.
I've never had a solo put up this much of a fight before. And I have had this apart before. I forgot because I had the GPS off. So this shouldn't be doing this. Come on out of there. There we go. Holy mackerel. That was a fight to the finish. All right. I pull this. I'm going to take my tweezers here and get in here. That should just unpop. There we go. Lost a screw on the floor there. I'll pick that up here in a sec. All right. So GPS has been disconnected. Let me get the rest of these screws out of here. I don't feel like I don't feel like losing those along the way. Two, three. Set all that aside. I'll let you have a look inside here. Um. All right. What are you guys saying on there? How's the swelling? It's not good. <laughs> Did you see how many views RC dude got on that fire? I did not. How are you swelling, bruising? Of course, Dan will have duct tape holding the prop arms on. <laughs> I am not Frankensteining anything. Whatever. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. Interesting. This solo's had a lot of use, but I can tell somebody else has been in here before. There's some extra solder marks on this. I can't be mad because this solo's always functioned perfectly, so that's interesting. Anyways, somebody has been in here and taken pin 14 already. Hmm, this is interesting here. Oh, no, I guess pin 14 is still available. Somebody messed with pin 13, but not 14, so 14 is still available. Wow, there's been some solder work inside here, so somebody was playing around with this before I got my hands on it. I can just tell by the way things have been put together inside here. That's interesting. There was solder work done here, 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 and over here along this entire board and also right there. They scorched the board so I can tell they've been inside here. That's, uh, that's interesting. Okay. Yes, yes, Roland. I, it, it, it was refurbished, so obviously, uh, they did some work to it. Now, don't get me wrong. This solo functions perfect. So I'm not that worried about it. DJI Ninjas got into Dan. Yeah. No, it's all good. Uh, somebody on accident soldered over pin 14, though. So that kind of sucks. That kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and remove the pin wire here. Is that on the top? Yes. Okay. We'll cut this off. There we go. I'm only going to be tapping this, so I'm going to put flux on the end of this. This is going to be a very tight solder. Very, very tight solder. Hmm. Yeah. So that's going to get inserted through the bottom of the solo. That's the wire for tilt controls once I'm done here. So I'm going to line that up. For now, I'm just going to wrap it. Wrap that up for a sec here. I'm going to start heating up my solder gun. And I'm going to change the tip on it before we go any further because the tip that's on here is just a tad bit too thick. I'm going to change it out to a smaller tip here. 
Give me one sec here, guys. Uh, what do you got going on there, Steve? No outboards from drones. Where's the grease? Nice. Good. I'm glad everybody's talking to each other. Is Ron in here? Ron, what's up, man? How's it hanging? We're getting ready to do some soldering, but I'm going to change over one of my tips here real quick on my solder gun. We're going to install a third-party gimbal so I can start running newer cameras on the Solo. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. It's fine. I don't want to use a bevel tip. We'll just take it really gentle. I don't see the point of putting a smaller one on there. It's not tight enough anyways. It's almost the same gap distance as this one. So we'll just start heating this up here. Then we'll tin that wire. <clears throat> Plug in there. Take a bit of the liquid flux. Just going to put a tad bit on the board down here. If I can. Um, there we go. And then we'll have to tin up this wire real quick, wherever it went. There we go. So, while we wait for the solder gun to heat up, what's going on? I'll check it out two minutes ago. I was wondering what you were doing. Yeah, man, we're going to install a third-party gimbal on here that weighs less. We're hoping to get some more flight time out of the Solo. We're reducing the whole Solo by around 80 grams, which is actually quite a bit. <sighs> 80 to 90 grams. I should get an extra two or three minutes of flight time out of that running on third party and I can run newer cameras. So that's what we're hoping for. This is going to be a long stream, guys. So like I said, you guys don't have to stay. If you're interested, stay. If not, don't worry about it. We're going to be at this for a while here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me tin up this wire real quick, see if this is hot enough yet. <laughs> All right. We're there now. Let's put a tad, 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 tad. Hmm. That wire is very hot. You have to turn the heat down a bit here. It melted the the relay wire. How you feeling? I'm doing all right there, Steve. I'm going in for my appointment. Hopefully, uh, what tomorrow? Tomorrow? No, not tomorrow. Wednesday. Wednesday is my appointment. Yes, I'm back in Bismarck today. Heck yeah. That's right. I forgot you were leaving, going out of town for a while. I like the windmill LED rotating race. Um, it will look like a satellite by the time it gets done. That is not true. Come on now. Well, no, the, the whole idea of this is that I can run newer cameras. I'm going to be running the GoPro Hero 4, obviously, until I can come up with the funds to buy a Hero 5, 6, or 7, or something like that, you know. But as of right now, it's just, it's going to be used with the Hero 4 like it has been. But it's going to give me the option of using newer cameras and running lower weight. So I'll still be able to fly, have FPV, get tilt controls, all that fun stuff. And then later on, I'll do a breakout board, which is what I really want to do. 
get the brownie boards breakout board and then I'll have full functionality of the newer camera so I'll be able to change the settings inside the app and all that stuff. So that's what that's what we're working towards here. So don't go to sleep yet, phone. Come on. Just make sure your doc doesn't see your outboard video, Dan. No, 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 no. Oh, we're good. We're good. Uh, I'm pretty sure it should turn out just fine, my friend. All right. Let's add a little bit more shorter on there. Just a bit. I don't want too much because I want to dab it. Just want to dab it. That's all. There we go. Let's see if I can get this to work how it should. Let me get all these tools out of my way. Let me set this right down on pin 14. Just like that. All right, let me get a tad bit more solder, guys. There we go. Hmm, this one's been a pain in the butt, man. Whoever refurbished this solo got way too much solder on things. It's uh, we're gonna clean off this tip and have another go at it here. I'm gonna shear the tip, heat up the solder that's already there. I just want to tin the wire, man. Frustrating. I want to get that solder out of pin 14. There we go. Let's try that again now. Just a dab. We don't need that much. Dog, I had you. I had you on there. Okay. Okay. Yo, the refurbished team that worked on this sucks. Come on, man. You're slowing this whole process down. There we go. That is a tiny, tiny, small little solder job there. That's a frustrating solder job. All right. Uh, 
Excellent. See how small that little pin out is? I don't know if you guys can see that, but let me hold this in a different direction. See if you guys can get a better look at that. Very, very tiny little pin out board there. <clears throat> that uh, you really don't want to cross any wires either. No cross polarization. Okay. So signal wires ready to be inserted down here. Just for safety measure, I'm going to heat up my hot glue gun because I want to put a dab on there so that can't keep moving around. And if you guys like this, how about that? Boom. And then turn it on. Pow! 4S powered gun. Let's take a second to heat up. See what the comments are saying here. Top job, Dan. Well, thank you. Yo, I don't know who refurbished this unit, but they did a piss poor job of soldering in those hole leads. They actually covered pin 14 for no reason. That was annoying. Very annoying. Don't forget to smash the like button, you guys. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Where can I find the weights for the original gimbal or a substitute for them? Um, actually, dude, a really easy thing to do, Trey, is just use pennies. Just put a couple pennies on the outside, man, and glue them on there until you find the happy median. That's my suggestion to you. Pennies are an excellent way to uh, weigh a gimbal to bring it into its precision point. It's copper, so it's really easy to slice and cut up if you want to. All right, so... My hot glue gun is obviously telling me that it's ready here because it's spewing. So I'll go ahead, unplug. I'm just going to tap that on this side if I can. That way I can put some extra pull on that wire if I need to. I don't have to worry about it moving around, and I still have access to pin 15. Because this gimbal wire could get tossed around pretty good. You want to make sure it has a good connection with the board, and it's not going to be getting pulled on a lot. You know what I mean? There we go. <clears throat> Excellent. Set that aside. Set that aside. Good to go. Okay. That part's done with. Now you guys know what's left here. This goes back on. You got to re-plug in the GPS. Which goes this way here. There we go. GPS has been replugged. Make sure your signal wire is underneath your new relay signal wires underneath the GPS one. There we go. And then this comes down like so. Pops into place just like that. Beautiful. Just gorgeous, man. All right, so now we got our FPV wire and our relay wire hanging down here, if you guys can see that. And we're almost ready to mount the camera, but I still have to work on the connector down below. So let me put some fresh solder on my solder gun here so we don't ruin the tip. There we go. Nice. Okay, let's put these screws back in. One at a time. Start with two on the front, two on the back, and then work our way to the middle. So 
that one. And I'll do one in the back here. Beautiful. One straight across. Don't forget, I still got the one I dropped on the floor, you guys. <laughs> I got to go down and find that puppy. Mm -hmm. oh, it's nice and tight. Beautiful. And... Come on now, don't be like that. There we go. I'll put this one right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There we go. Now we can take the GPS cap, put that back on here. Make sure it's got a clear connection all the way around. There we go. There we go. GPS cap is back on. Now I got to get this one screw I dropped on the floor here. If I can get it. There we go. That last screw goes right there. All right. 14 people in here. Oh, the comment section stopped, huh? Awesome. Next up. So we've got our we've got our extender. All right. This is the cable that I ordered that extends the HDMI cable right there. It's just an attachment. So if I wanted to go back to OEM or stock, I could do that. Just unplug, unplug, and hide the relay wire. You could just tuck the relay wire back up in there. Okay. Now we're gonna tap into the red and the black on this. And we are going to solder on a male JST connection instead of using the breakout board. So I'm going to go ahead and just snip this back like so. About right there. We only need a little bit. We don't need all that extra wire. That way, if you want to revert back to stock gimbal, you can do that at any point in time. There's that. There's that. So we'll wait to connect that here in a sec. Well, we're almost at the point where we can mount the gimbal on here. I wonder if this froze. <laughs> Not, nobody's really talking, so let me see if this froze here. There we go. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Jeez, guys, sorry. For whatever reason, the comments froze. I don't know if you've been talking to me or not, but. Cubby for life. What's up, guys? Make sure you're subbing up to one another, man. Make sure you guys are showing some love and support. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my knife. Actually, we'll take the screwdriver. We'll extract the red wire from the batch like so. And we'll reach in there and we'll get the black wire. Like so. Get these two out and away from the bunch of them there. And we'll split them. And we'll solder. So let's start with the black wire here. That's a good place to start, right? 
So to give yourself a little extra room to work, go ahead and push the connector up. That'll make it so that you can access that wire. I'm going to slowly shave back on it here. If I have to go get a razor blade, I will, but most of the time I can just kind of get right in there and make enough of a spot where I can solder to it. Normally doesn't require much. There we go. So now I can solder onto that little piece that's sticking out. I'll clear off the extra. Same thing with the red. Go ahead and pull out the red here. Make a nice little spot. Nice little spot for me to be able to connect to. Just like that. Take my knife. Open up a little bit of it here. And we got something to solder on to. This one's kind of being a pain here. There we go. And guys, make sure your battery's not in when you're doing any of this. <laughs> that would end pretty bad for you. You talking to me? Huh? You talking to me? I'm talking to the both of you. Calm down, huh? All this testosterone up in here. Swear to God, I'm at a baseball game, man. There we go. Man, this one is really putting up a fight, too. All right, so... Now that we're inside there, we have a place that we can connect both solder joints. We're going to go ahead and do that. Sopranos. Love it, Dan, huh? Yeah. Let's get that out of the way. Okay. So now we're ready for our JST connector, which unfortunately I didn't cut the wires back on yet. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, we're good. I'm going to go ahead and tin these wires real fast, guys, so you can see what's still going on. I'm just going to put a dab on the table. Get some more solder here. Boom. We're going to tin both of these up. Tin, tin, tin. Tin life. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice and tinned up for you there, if you guys can see that. Okay. Well, I think the easiest thing to do is probably the same thing I just did down there. Tin these ones up as well. Get a little bit of solder on there. There we go. Right, we got something to connect to now. There we go. All right. Get that extra piece off there. Clean the tip off one more time here, guys. I want to have a good, clean solder joint. Lightly. There we go. Okay, let's start with the right, work our way left.
Boom. Ah, you like it? That's what I thought. Okay. Now we'll heat up the... Uh, Hot <sighs> glue gun again with the 4S connector. Don't worry, those wires are not going to get hot. I'm done with my solder gun, so I'm going to go ahead and unplug that. Scale out of the way. Out of the way. Heat up the solder gun again, or the hot glue gun again. Get these out of the way. So now you have the option to plug into stock gimbal setup like so if you want to go back and you have the option to run third-party gimbal through JST connection. Move them right along here, folks. Move them right along. Do do Rick Halliburton in the house. What do you mean you can't sleep? Just go to bed. It's easy. All right. Spot on, Ronald. Are we almost heated up here enough? So all I like to do, guys, to make sure these wires never touch again is just put a little hot glue in between them. Obviously, with a wide joint like this, you can't really heat shrink each individual wire, so I'm not even going to make the attempt. Just going to put a little hot glue on them to make sure they can't make contact with any boards or anything that might, you know, potentially cause a short in the line. Really? Really? Not right now. All right. So let's get in here and get some glue going in between these guys here. Remember to cover them good because you really don't want this to short out anything inside the solo if you're pushing it around and a hot, you know, these are hot wires. These have power going to them. So you really, like I said, just make sure that you cover these good enough that you don't on accident uh, short out any other wires by leaving them open and available to touch other things. Get that out of the way. A little hot glue, a little bit more on that side. There we go. All the way up into the Y. Beautiful. All right, so that's pretty much set. There's no reason to go any further with that. Let that cool off here for a sec. So there you go. Stock or third party? Choice is yours. 15 people in here and only 13 likes. We got a problem, ladies and gentlemen. Some people are forgetting to support this wonderful guy behind the camera. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Next up. All the fun stuff is done here, guys. Now we get to get into the flight parameters. This is going to be the exciting part. So let me plug into here. Is that upside down? That is upside down. That's why it's hard to connect. So this is just an extension, a loose cable extension wire. Because this cable is too stiff to try to tilt the gimbal up and down. So this is a... Third-party wire. I will put the purchase link for this in the description of the video. I think we're pretty much good to go here. It is time to install the third-party gimbal. You guys ready? Let's put that on here. And then we have to tune the gimbal. We have to get in there and set up the flight parameters. So here's the third-party gimbal set up. I'm going to go ahead and unplug these wires. The two top wires, one is... Tilt, and the other one is, uh, I don't remember. 
<laughs> I honestly don't remember, but whatever. Okay, so I think I think the easiest thing to do would be to insert this wire back inside of here. That way you don't have any extra wires that aren't needed sticking out of the solo. Come on, don't put up a fight. Just do what I tell you to do. It's really easy. There we go. Okay, so this is ready to be powered. So we can plug directly into the power port. Come on. There you go. So now it's going to be powered by the stock gimbal connector. Okay. And then the FPV is going to hang down. And then this is your relay wire. And this is for tilt controls on it. All right. That's the wire that we soldered to pin 14, if anybody's wondering. This is a 30 millimeter uh, HDMI pigtail wire, uh, allowing you to have a loose cable, which is really nice. So let's uh, let's go ahead and shove these wires down and through here, okay, through the gimbal board so that these can stick out. And I think best bet would be to have them stick out on obviously this side because this is the side that it's going to plug into. That makes sense, right? Let me make sure I can get this. We're going to use a pair of needle nose to pull this through. Oh, come on. Don't be a whiny little baby. There we go. All right, so that's through there. Beautiful. Next up is the relay wire, which is right here. That is going to go on this side because that's where the relay side is. So we'll go ahead and push the relay wire through. We're going to plug it in the top prong here. There we go. Now, let's do some wire hiding, shall we? Let's push all this up in there. See what kind of room we got to work with here now. Remember not to jam any wires. Get everything up in there as best you can. All right. There we go. Relays plugged in. HDMI cables hanging on this side here, guys. I'd say that looks pretty clean. What do you guys think? Let me reset this. Okay. Cool. So far, so good. I got plenty of movement on there. Everything looks like it's going to have a good amount of uh, ability to transfer the vibrations. There's no real extra wires sticking down. This should be the only wire hanging at this point. All the power wires and everything are up in there. So now I can take this screwdriver because what I did is I took my stock uh, gimbal that came on this with just the GoPro connection. And I went ahead and used that as my third-party gimbal setup. So... Go ahead and put these three screws in just like normal to hold the gimbal into place. Now we got a good, nice, tight connection across the board. There we go. Okay. Now, what are we missing here, guys? You know what we're missing? We're missing a GoPro. That would be what we're missing. So, GoPro Hero 4 plugged in right here. That fits right over the stock camera setup. So, like I said, even if you guys have a Solo but you don't have a gimbal, this is perfect for your needs. So make sure we got a good, solid feel to this. And then I'll go ahead and pull this Velcro all the way down and underneath. And there we go. 
Now we'll take the HDMI wire, figure out which way that needs to go, right there. And we'll tuck the excess up inside that we're not going to be using. If I can get that up and in there, there we go. And three, two, one, third party gimbal. Pow, 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 pow. <laughs> what do you think? It looks good. I need to tighten the back up just a little bit here. These zip ties could be a tad bit tighter, so I may have to undo this, but for now, I think we're good. It sits on the ground just fine. What do you think? Let's power it up. Let's power it up and see if it stabilizes like it should. Let's do that. Let's stick a battery in it and see what happens. I always forget about that. Okay. Uh, drop this on there. Plug in. Let's see if it stabilizes. Watch my solo just get smoked. Oh, my gosh. Rick Halliber with a $20 super chat. You, my friend, are my hero. Thank you very much, sir. Pray for no smoke, guys. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Huh? I know you all saw that. Pow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's alive. It's alive. <laughs> okay, we got a little more work to do though. Um it is leaning backwards, so obviously I still need to tighten up some of the zip ties that I put on there, which is fine. And uh, it seems to be able to handle the cable just fine. Seems to be able to, those are pretty strong little motors on there. So, but man, it's doing an excellent job of keeping this thing smooth and moving forward. So, good to go. Steve Carpenter with a $20 super chat. Holy mackerel. Craziness. There you go. We're not done yet, guys. We still have more to go. All we have right now is the ability to tilt forward and backwards and, and side to side. All it's doing is stabilizing. We have to take this a step further. We need actual gimbal controls. So let's give it some gimbal controls. First thing I'm going to do is power it off again real quick. Everything should shut down. Bam, beautiful. We're going to turn on the transmitter for the first time. Since this got connected, I'm going to now power this back on. We're going to wait for these two to communicate with each other. And now, unfortunately, guys, I need my phone here. So I have to change the flight parameters inside Arducopter for channel six pass through. And then uh, I have to put it as one pass through function. So we're going to go to RC6, and then we're going to go through uh, RC function. And then I need to figure out if the tilt controls are set correctly right now. So we should be able to use the stock, the stock uh, toggle switch like this to be able to control it. Okay. So let's uh, get connected to the solo for the first time here with the new app. I'm not using Tower. I'm using uh, Mission Maker for Arducopter, which is the new Tower app for 3DR Solo. For those of you that are running on Arducopter setup. Isn't this awesome? Like, dude, it's so amazing to be able to go from a stock setup, uh, OEM stock setup, to a setup that allows you to run newer cameras, man. That's, that's the beauty of open source. It really is. All right, let's get connected to the Solo's Wi-Fi.
solo link connect there we go obtaining IP address you are now connected so now I'm gonna open Arducopter remove dependency on 3dr services okay so now we need to go through UDP connect need GPS lock all right so now we're connected let's go to parameters so in case you guys haven't seen this is what the parameters look like so now my phone is communicating with the internals of the computer system the online computer the onboard computer system of this for Arducopter which is Picox and I'm going to be changing some of the stock parameters that it came with so we're going to be doing an RC6 so the first thing I'm going to do is type in here RC6 and you'll see the RC6 function pops up there RC6 function we're going to click on RC6 function I'm going to go through RC pass through one and then I'm going to push the back button and I'm going to upload the parameter. That's it guys. That's it. We're done. We are done. See, if you notice now I have tilt controls. Stock gimbal tilt controls or uh, third party gimbal controls. If I go down, you see it. If I go up, you see it. Pow. Like an absolute boost. Now we're done. Now we're good to go. Now I have full functionality of tilt controls. I can go out and record with a third party gimbal, have stabilization, and it works with my controller like it should. It doesn't just stabilize the video it actually allows me to have tilt controls and smoothly too look at i can be very precise with it or i can go super fast what do you think huh huh okay Well, there you go, guys. That is how to install a third-party PMW gimbal um, at a fraction of the weight of the original gimbal. Like I said, this one came in at 200 and almost 40 grams. This entire setup with the GoPro is 240 grams. So I'm basically getting the same functionality out of this that I get out of that, but at a lower weight, which means better flight times. I can also use newer cameras and still have tilt controls. So the Solo is an animal first hand but which camera will fit well all you need is a different piece of velcro man so as long as it has an hdmi plug-in port just like this one does you should be able to plug in and have all that now this is only the first phases of this setup i'm going to be getting the extension board that plugs into the bottom here so i can actually use the pinouts and then I'll be able to communicate with the GoPro interface on this, which is what I really want to do. I want to be able to communicate with the interface. When we go back and we do that, I'm actually going to take the stop gimbal and I'm going to chop all this extra stuff out of here. So I'll be able to plug into that interface, okay? So you'll be able to plug like a Hero 5 into here into the interface and still be able to communicate or a Hero 7, all right? So the stop gimbal actually you can take this a lot further, but the, the whole principle of this build right here was that if you wanted to run newer cameras, it gives you the ability to now. So let's say I didn't want to run a Hero 4. I could strap down a Hero 5, and as long as it has an HDMI port, I can plug in, get FPV, and still be able to take insanely good footage, see what I'm doing, and have tilt controls over the camera. So that's what this setup is really for. If I want to take it and go Hero 5 through 7 with this, then I have to do a ton of modifying, which I'm up for. I'm going to purchase another gimbal and we're going to tear out all this stuff and I'm going to show you guys the entire build process so that you can remove all this extra stuff that only fits the Hero 4 and then we can plug into this. And then there's an extension from Brownie Boards that you can plug into the extension port on the bottom here and run the pinouts through the extension port and that will give you full functionality just like the Hero 4 of the Hero 7, Hero 6, Hero 5, all that good stuff. So... I just wanted a way to run newer cameras right now, so that's what we're doing, and I wanted to show you guys how to do this 
we've been live now for that took roughly an hour to do but like i said you guys didn't see me build the gimbal setup either i had to do all this extra stuff on the gimbal so it is what it is so yeah uh steven schinderwolf actually has it uh he was the one that created that mod so congrats to steven schinderwolf um i once again my my original third party gimbal setup sucked um it's nowhere near as clean as this uh setup is so i wanted to redo it on my solo that i've been flying now for three years and um i think this will be much happier for me so i, I really want to take this out i'm still gonna have to probably tune this with base cam um, I'm sure there's going to be some instabilities in it. I have to tighten down a few of these uh, <laughs> zip ties that I put on here to suck it right to the bottom, but I think we're doing good so far. So thank you guys for the super chats, for all of you that stuck around through all of this. Very cool of you um, for being so supportive. Uh, we are now running my original solo on a third-party gimbal system, and it looks good. I, I, it functions well. I have complete control over it, which is exactly what I wanted. And uh, it runs just as smoothly as the original gimbal does without hesitations. It's just a very smooth, nice little setup. So I will have to take this out when I get a chance and see if it's going to require any tuning. And we will go from there. So, all right, guys. I will catch you on the flip. Thank you for being awesome. And uh, until next time, to Daru.